after the presentation from Vasya, now we will come uh, to our last presentation related to the yeah, IT solutions, let's say. Uh, Sia, um, are you are you prepared? I am well prepared. <laughs> so, okay, that, yeah. that, that's good. That's good. That's good. I, I so, assume that you can see the the screen, right? I can I, see the presentation. I can see your your your, your camera. So then okay. I give you the give you the floor. Okay. All right. So, so I, I keep the camera on um, just to just to have something next to the presentation. Uh, so. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Sia Vash I'm, um, You can call me Sia. I know it's a bit uh, long, also maybe a bit unusual. Uh, on behalf of my team, today I'm presenting um, basically a research on how to analyze and understand the scenarios which can support the adoption of uh, circular green technologies. And I'm a postdoctoral researcher in, in the Flemish Research Institute for Agriculture, Fisheries and Food. And our main mission there is basically to um, to derive uh, policy uh, support tools for um, uh, for a more sustainable agriculture, fisheries, and especially uh, food sector. So. Um, Today on the agenda, uh, we have uh, first a very brief introduction on, of the circular economy. Uh, I, I know it, it is; uh, it might be repetitive. If you are here, it means you know it a lot. But uh, hear me out. Uh, and then uh, the case, that which uh, for for us is about volatile project, but uh, its connection to to the previous section could be interesting. And the methods that we use, and of course the results, mostly across two levels of company and industry. So, um, generally speaking, uh, we are here because uh, we think circular economy is important and it's against uh, linear economy. And what, what is wrong with linear economy in general is about this input-output model set that is mostly at the company level and does not include the fact that uh, what happens if you are over-exploiting the resources that goes through the input or what happens if uh, we are producing a lot of waste even though we are very profitable uh, and uh, exactly what happens to the environment. And that causes a lot of uh, social environmental damages and uh, it, is, uh, it is now clear that uh, we need to take action upon that. And, paradigms or theories such as sustainability, they emer emerge uh, against this back, uh, backdrop. So what the sustainability say is that, that uh, we need to find a compromise, an optimum level basically between economic, social, environmental efficiencies. Arguably, uh, circular economy is, is a sustainability method that is trying to basically tackle the issue mostly between environment and the economic dimensions. I know that there are also a lot of debates around that to which degree do we need circular economy and uh, how much of that we need to also not really reach the rebound effects in terms of increasing the demand and the, on, the, on the inputs and the waste. But um, definitely to a certain degree of that is necessary and that's why we are here. So uh, what is circular economy? It, it is nothing but just trying to close the loops as much as possible. I mean, this graph looks very simple if you think of a supply chain from the production to the consumption. But believe me, it becomes very, very complex if you think of all these overlapping um, supply chains that we have. And um, just for now, uh, we are focusing on this part, which is about the innovation uh, of uh, what to do with waste, basically. And waste treatment plants are also our, our interest and our focus because um, basically they are the, the hub of the whole system where all the waste from different supply chains arrive. And so we can say that waste treatment industry has an agency for the transition to our circular economy. So what do we need to do for it? Um, there are a lot of things that they need to go hand in hand. They, these elements that I listed here, they're all interconnected. We need to increase awareness. A lot of innovation is needed. Uh, are, and also new technologies and all of these, they need a strategy behavior change, uh, looking for alternative business models uh, along line with legislation and support. Uh, our focus today would be mostly on adoption of a new technology, which is also very much in line with the volatile fatty acid platform. And, 
why adoption of a new technology because uh, it is a sort of practice that um, that has all the other elements embedded in it. So if a company is going to adopt a new technology that is in the direction of the circular economy, we can say that that company is already doing some innovation, taking strategy and aiming to have some behavior change within itself and also is outside and of course deriving business models for the sustainability of the technology. So um, focusing on the technology, we looked into the literature and there are two paradigms that could be interesting uh, to get inspirations from. Um, the first one is generally technology adoption or diffusion theory model. Uh, that's, a, that's a very old theory, but it's widely used. Uh, the mechanisms there uh, are quite uh, simple. So if you summarize the literature, you will see that everyone talks about there are, there are a group of innovators that they have economic conditions that uh, are enough to adopt a, a certain practice or, or buy a product even. And the later adoption and the fusion is basically followed by, uh, by peer pressure mechanism. And this is mostly at the actor level. But if you look at the institution itself, um, basically the whole environment, the whole system, uh, there is another paradigm that could be interesting. It's about isomorphism in the system that says that the system is kind of resistant and those resistant coming, uh, are coming from the, the following um, pressures, uh, which is uh, mimetic pressure, for example, with uh, quite very similar to the peer pressure, how much of your environment is uh, your your neighbors basically are uh, influencing you to to lean toward a direction. And then there's a coercive pressure, which are basically the governmental acts or directives. A normative pressure, uh, which could come from uh, professional associations, like standard associations telling you that if, if you do a certain thing or if you adopt a technology, uh, you might be ranked better. And there's a competitive pressure that have been uh, less studied, but the point here is that that uh, you try to deviate from the institution by adopting a new thing, and that deviation may cause the institution to become less isomorphic. But then, because of the other mechanisms in play, the institution may also lean toward you. So, uh, if we know these uh, these mechanisms that are kind of overlapping, also then what can we learn from them for the adoption of a new technology in the context of circular economy would be that try to derive mechanisms in forms of scenarios or uh, that could be plausible toward this transition. So the questions that we ask are basically uh, very simple, but uh, we want to tailor it for circular economy technologies. So what are the social mechanism, socioeconomic mechanisms behind uh, such technology adoption and to which extent? So the first question we answer it mostly at the company level because we want to see how a company looks at the, the whole phenomena and then to the extent we look at it at the industrial level, in our case, uh, waste treatment industry. So the case that uh, we use to answer that question is a volatile uh, fatty acid platform uh, in the frame of the volatile project. Um, I'm not going to explain that a lot because there has been series of presentations on it, but essentially it's a process-based technology that you add to your company as a waste treatment plant uh, that enables you to produce three, uh, here we have also acid acid, like three or four higher end products. And just in case acid acid is in the lower end of these higher, these three higher end products, but essentially they are higher than the, the medium uh, produced. So what does it mean when you have new products? It means that it's an entrance to a new market. So it's not yet another investment, it's also about entering a new, a new market that uh, arguably waste treatment plants are not used to it at this moment. So the important factors that we try to, to explore throughout the uh, uh, our case it are about like uh, what are those mechanisms uh, making a technology more feasible economically and of course also we look at the social pressure what if your environment uh, is pushing you toward adoption and the role of gate fee as some sort of uh, economic incentives and supports such as uh, um, subsidies uh, that uh, you can find through, uh, throughout your network. 
here is just another repetition. So essentially, uh, on the right hand side, you see the business as usual. This is the current status of the of the industry that most of the companies they get the waste and they produce heat uh, composed and uh, and biogas and electricity and on the left hand side is kind of a disruption to the ordinary business which is about like no let's add a a, a process-based technology that could enable us to produce first volatile fatty acid that which true we can produce single cell oil omega-3 and bioplastics or, or pha in this case so um so this part on the left hand side is basically adding a lot of uncertainty in a sense of uh, that uh, does it make sense first to adopt it and if so how much of risk a treatment plant that is not used to competing in new market needs to take the data that we collected to answer those questions are basically every every possible data throughout the project we had uh, we had a lot of uh, qualitative data by interviewing and doing workshops, uh, like focus groups uh, to understand the rationale behind uh, the, the adoption decision, and also quantitative data in in really understanding uh, uh, basically cost benefit analysis in a sense of uh, what are the potential returns that you can gain, and uh, and how much uh, uh, how much could it be changed also throughout the mechanisms that I will explain later. The methods at the company level, we basically do that cost-benefit analysis, but we, uh, we triangle it with, uh, with market research and value proposition analysis as a frame, uh, as a building blocks of business modeling. And at the industrial level, we use agent-based modeling, uh, which is a very good method to, um, to investigate complex adaptive systems where you have uh, basically interacting organizations uh, or interacting units that they may influence each other in decision making and also throughout agent based modeling we are adding also some other uh, uh, some some other mechanisms such as stochasticity that um, um, it can also say that uh, for example even though something might be very profitable might be very uh, very interesting to adopt but it may also not happen so we are adding some randomness in the model that are not predictable so uh, the results of the business modeling, I'm, I'm just uh, showing you a summary of that. So it's, uh, it's not very extensive, but we have them all in, uh, in our analysis. Um, first of all, we look at the market part of uh, each product. So if a company wants just to invest on the VFA production, so it doesn't go to the higher end products, it just reaches the volatile fatty acid uh, um, product and for that there is no real market so that company needs to basically create a new market that might have a lot of risk involved so uh, i guess we are not suggesting that at this point to, to happen but uh, but if the company wants to go for other products that could uh, that could be the outcome of a volatile fatty acid platform investment um there are essentially four types of investments one is that you only focus on acetic acid which is on the lower end uh, but in a more circular economy way, you may like to focus on PHA, or SEO, or PUFA, the omega-3. So um, the market size then becomes very important. In the case of a, that a company invests only on the PHA, you will see that the, the market size is rather small. Um, that says that um, if five of the current companies, they invest largely in PHA production, they will reach the 5% of the target market. I mean, it seems small, but at the same time, if uh, if the company can really enter that market, take uh, and who's willing to take the risk, and it will gain a lot of uh, supplying bargaining power uh, against the customers. So there is a risk, but the also, but at the same time, the gains could be very high. Whereas in the case of SEO, the market is, is very large. So if uh, 4,100 of uh, the current companies invest largely in SEO, they will reach 5% of the target market. In case of Pupa, the number is uh, uh, 70. But um, more than that, um, that which strategies you can take, you can maybe try to play with the price, try to sell it lower or higher, depending on market size. What is important and what is more uh, um, tailored toward the circular economy is this supporting movements 
perhaps what is what we need to really look into is also about the trends. Uh, we have the social trends around PHA uh, consumption, SEO and PUFA in a sense that, uh, for example, uh, there is, I guess you all know that there are a lot of movements toward biogradable packaging, people becoming against fossil based plastics in general. And um, then you also have the, the this global trend against palm oil, I guess there, right, not now, but at least uh, Back in uh, back in few few months ago, there was uh, always a time that people were uh, criticizing the current industry of palm oil and its usage. And the same with the overfishing issue that we have, and that the, which are mostly the the source of um, uh, omega three. So if you look at this part, these are very much circular economy based and might be very interesting for for a company to to reflect upon if they want to invest in a certain technology. Here um, I'm adding another uh, another factor, the gate fee. So uh, he, and the numbers on the left hand side that you see, they're like the volume of waste and the VFA potential as an intermediate product for the for the PHA SEO and the assay acid. Uh, these are just average number in, in throughout the cases that we collected. Um, so let's say it and. Um, uh, some companies they may have higher capacity of that and some companies could have a lower capacity but if we do the cost benefit analysis based on the current situation and the average situation in industry um, each of these scenarios could become profitable if uh, if the gate fee increases to a certain degree of course these numbers um, we should not take them um, uh, as accurate as they look here uh, of course, if there is uh, some changes uh, in the quality of waste received or on the yield of each of these scenarios, for example, I know that the PHA scenarios um, yield has been increased, so we may include that in future. That these the gate fee necessary for for a plausible um, scenario uh, will also decrease. So um, this is something important to consider. And at the same time, the yield that of each uh, process that could have in future. So the takeaway at the company level would be that, uh, first of all, market is very important and it looks like there is a very, uh, a very good trend around it. So we can say there is a potential, uh, there is a potential for such investment. Gate fee is also very important and it appears, that, or we can also consider gate fee to be increasing in future as uh, there is the whole movement around uh, secure economy, sustainability. Uh, as I explained earlier, yield factor is also very important. That says we need to improve the technology. And uh, how to improve the technology, we may think of maybe uh, pilots and more research-based uh, projects. Um, I, I will come back to that uh, in the agent-based modeling part as well. But um, it should not be underestimated that uh, all the investment decisions, they contain uh, risk, uh, risk taking. So. Um, we need a entrepreneurial attitude and we also uh, need to clarify that the um, the current industry waste treatment industry is not as competitive as uh, the future markets that i explained earlier so there there is also some uh, some need for the mindset shift so at the second level we are trying to focus at the industrial level so what we have here is that we're using agent based modeling and this is a net logo environment which is a which is open source software so we try to create an environment uh, where you have a multiplex network of organizations or in our case plants and these plants are connected um, in community networks and they may influence each other's decision and here all on the left hand side you see all the parameters that we include in our model and um, I, in a nutshell we have uh, parameters such as the the variation in the waste that one company could receive or, or the cost of investments they may receive we add also some sort of randomness above the baseline that we calculated in our uh, cost benefit analysis and we try to kind of project um, futuristic scenarios when we are changing the parameters in this environment. 
So um, how an agent or um, an actor decides or make decision, uh, there are three main elements. Um, one is that it's about exactly that cost-benefit cost analysis, um, which we call it economic reasoning. So uh, in the end, it's about return on investment assessment. So how economically feasible is a VFAP uh, investment? And then another part of it is about social pressure, the social reasoning. How much of attention an agent uh, gives to its environment? So th that says that if you see someone around you uh, is adopting this uh, technology, you may think uh, that, well, it looks like someone else took the risk and maybe it could work also for me. In, that, in, in, in this scenario, um, let's say your risk taking would be improved or, or, or the other way you can say that the perceived risk is going to decrease. And the last point is about attention to environmental reasoning, basically some sort of uh, progressiveness towards circular economy sustainability. Uh, we are not really varying this parameter, but we think that if, uh, if a company is at this level that is thinking of uh, trying to adopt a volatile uh, fatty acid platform, it means that it, it has already given enough attention to environmental reasoning. So let's, let's now check uh, the scenarios that we want to check. First, uh, we look into the cost of investments and role of subsidies. So even though we have uh, a cost benefit analysis baseline, but what if the numbers that we are uh, we have produced are not really that accurate so we try to variate that also a little bit and we also want to see the role of subsidies uh, we have not entered subsidies yet in our cost benefit analysis but we are entering it as a as a incent, uh, as an incentive in, in in the agent based modeling and then we want to look at the increase in gate fee and of course the social pressure effect which is the attention to social reasoning which will eventually reduce the attention to the economic reasoning and the last part is about the number of uh, installed pilots why installed pilots because uh, pilots are platforms for increasing the technology efficiency so in that case we can assume that when a pilot is installed uh, there is a chance that the yield would be uh, increased and that will help the scalability of the uh, pilot into a plant, basically. So why uh, we are adding also uh, increasing the attention to social reasoning on the last part is mainly because that um, what if uh, we put a lot of attention on the pilots and at the same time, the social movement is going to take into place and how the combination of these two factors could help the, the adoption of a VFAP in, in industry. So um, the first round of results shows, uh, first of all, the cost of investments on the left-hand side. When we increase the, the cost of investment, it, it is uh, very clear. So you see the adoption rate uh, over 25 years also increases up to uh, uh, here is like 20%. By the way, the, the numbers are quite low because our, our the environment that we assume has a lot of inertia. So even though we may think that if the the uh, return on investment uh, are are promising, but we still assume that some agents may not adopt at all. And but so when we increase the subsidy rate on on investments, we will see that the adoption also increases here. So, um, so just to make it again clear that uh, on, on the left we have the, the, the role of cost of investments, more investments, less adoption, and on the right hand side we have the subsidies, more subsidies, more, more adoption. But um, just in case what we have not included here is that, that when the cost of investments are really high, uh, with the current framework of this uh, investment subsidies, and the adoption would become very low and the role of subsidies would become basically zero. And that's because that, uh, that the portion that is covered by the subsidies will not be enough to get a positive uh, uh, returns. Let's look into the gate fee. Um, on the left-hand side, you will see again this, um, this 
uh, adoption rate over 25 years. With the increase in the gate fee, we will see that uh, the, the adoption also increases. But the interesting part is that I will, let's try to also compare the differences between uh, these trajectories, basically. We, we try to find out now on the right-hand side uh, what, what could be the maximum adoption rate at different gate fees? So uh, if you look at that, you will see that up to 25, uh, arguably 35 uh, euro ton for a gate fee, the adoption is not really changing that much. And in a similar way, on the upper tail, you will see above 85 or 90, you will see the adoption rate uh, is not going to change that much. The reasoning behind is that that uh, for a for a gate fee to be effective, it needs to pass a minimum. So if the governments they decide to increase the the gate fee by increasing only a, a very little portion of it, they should not expect uh, economic incentives to be perceived. But if they increase it from, for example, in this case, 35 up to 85, they will see the effect. And why not above that, uh, there, is no, um, there is no more adoption, let's say, or, or that very uh, impressive adoption, is basically because the, the companies are, are not as rational uh, that they think. They, they may also choose other uh, pro uh, technologies to adopt. So it is better to always be in, in this area of, uh, of the gate fee mechanism. So on the interaction of uh, the combination of economic reasoning and social reasoning, which was the, the third scenario, we wanted to understand what is the role of social pressure, let's say. Um, first, let's look into the economic reasoning. So uh, on the left-hand side, you will see that uh, uh, after 25 years, um, what would happen if we have different economic reasoning effects? So when we increase the attention to economic reasoning, let's say from 90% to 100% here, you will see that there is an effect. So you will see the adoption will actually take place when the attention to economic reasoning is above, let's say, 90%. Below that, it means that the company is that much risk averse that does not trust its cost benefit analysis at all. But above that, the company starts to realize that there is some incentives, there are some potential behind uh, the investment for the volatile fatty acid platform. The variation that you see at each box is caused by the social pressure. So. Let's look into that on the right-hand side. If we look at the, uh, the averages of each box plot, you will see that they are increasing. So that says, when we increase the attention to social reasoning, the, the adoption also increases over 25 years. Um, but something interesting is that, that above 50% of the attention to social reasoning, basically social pressure, we are facing a plateau that says that, well, um, we, if we don't have enough um, economic mechanisms, the social pressure may not work after a certain point. We may have a lot of social movement, uh, social pressure, but if we don't have enough attention to economic reasoning, this will stay like that. So we need other mechanisms also in play, like subsidies and gate fee that I explained earlier. And in the next scenario, I'll complement that with, with the pilots effect. Here you can see when we increase the number of pilots being installed and with the chance of 20% um, scalability, you will see that uh, there, is a, there is a higher adoption rate over time. Um, we also try to look at it with the social reasoning. As I explained earlier, it's, it's about understanding if this combination could have a tipping point where the environment becomes very pressurizing for the adoption of a circular technology. 
And yes, it, it, it looks that it has. So if we look at on the right hand side, you will see that um, while we increase the attention to social reasoning, at the same time, we cause this variation due to the effect of pilots, you will see that uh, the adoption goes up. But again, because of the social reasoning mechanism explained earlier, uh, you will see there is a plateau effect. So you need other mechanisms to be in place to, to incentivize the adoption to change the trajectory of the uh, VFAP adoption in the industry. So with that, I would like to conclude um, this presentation. Um, first of all, um, we found out that uh, it looks uh, VFAP is, is like a doorway uh, to our new market that they have different sizes and, and depending on the type of strategy a company is willing to take, uh, they could be promising. Uh, what is also very important and we found in our analysis is about the, the improvement in the VFAP technology. And if you have higher yields, of course, profitable scenarios are very likely. At the same time, we have the gate fee that uh, could play also a role. And we have showed uh, that, that also the, the plateau effects for gate fee and at the same time also for the social pressure. So these two are also, if you think about them, is they're very interesting. That uh, it is a, it is very important uh, to consider those plateaus and think of uh, somewhere in between, N not thinking too little and not thinking too high. So don't think of uh, as a policymaker, uh, you should not think of a very high gate fee to be in place. You can try to play with the system in the middle and the same with the social pressure. So um, I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate. Ashia, thanks a lot for the presentation. Maybe you should have made the, the, the final one, the final conclusions, because you were able to, to put it all very, very nicely uh, yeah. together from, from the starting to the end. Thanks, thanks a yeah. lot. Yeah. I like the like the presentation a lot. Uh, yeah. Let's see if there are uh, questions for you. In the moment, uh, let's see. Also, if somebody would like to have a questions to uh, this presentation, uh, please you can write now in the in the question section. If they appear later on, I will ask you later, Sia, as you stay, I suppose, until the final question uh, there. So yeah. there, I think it's, uh, there were quite a lot of information. And if you were not working, oh. at, I mean, uh, inside, as a, in this uh, things, um, it's maybe difficult then to 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 yeah, it's a, a, yeah. <laughs> ask ask a very specific question. Let's say. I, I mean, from our perspective, as I was inside the project, and I have seen it all the time. Um, okay, if there another question uh, occurs, uh, we can answer them also then in the final question section. So, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And I would like also, I would, I would like also to say maybe uh, also Anu couldn't join today. She's sick. She wrote me an email. Would like also to say Anu, she was also involved in the team, the uh, but she left there. So uh, thanks also to her. Uh, yes, this, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Anouk is basically the brain of our our analysis, the aging based yeah, no, analysis. Yeah, 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 she wrote me this morning that unfortunately yeah, she's yeah. sick and she cannot join the conference. So um, okay, then uh, see. Thanks uh, again. Then I uh, will take maybe now back the. Um,